Hello, welcome to module two of uh, NPTEL NOC on introductory course on point set topology part two. So today we will take the topic of differentiation on Banach spaces. So many things run parallel to what we do in calculus of variable, one variable calculus or two variable calculus and so on. Actually, you will see that it is copied one variable calculus, but the things have to be put in a proper perspective. Okay. So start with two Banach spaces. One can possibly do many things with uh, just normal spaces also, but we will concentrate only on Banach spaces because our idea of this presentation of these things is not to do the entire thing in a very general setup, but to cover the implicit function theorem and in, in inverse function theorem for uh, Banach spaces as a sample, as a sample of application of topological methods. Okay, so that's why we will concentrate only on Banach spaces. Take a subset U contained inside V, okay, an open subset around a point X naught inside V. Okay, V is a vector space. Okay, V is a nonlinear space. So there is uh, open subset system makes sense because we are using the norm to induce a metric to induce a topology. Okay, start with an open subset U around a point. A function defined on this open set into another Banach space is said to be differentiable at a at point x0 if there is a continuous linear map from t, uh, t from v to w such that this x is, this limit x is equal to 0. What is this? It is f of x0 plus h minus f x0 divided by the norm h. I can't divide by h. <laughs> so h is a vector inside uh, this norm in space v. Okay. Therefore, I can't do just this limit, but I have to do it by subtracting th, where t is a linear map, which is going to be the derivative. And then I can divide by norm h. This limit as h tends to 0, which is the same thing as saying norm h tends to 0, this limit must exist. So where is the limit existing? What is this one? f and, you know, f is taking values into w. t of, t is also from v to w, so t of h is also inside w. So all this numerator is taking value inside w, is a vector inside w. Okay. So, divided by norm h, of course, that is just a scalar. So, it's a vector inside w. This limit must exist. So, the important point here is that we must have a continuous linear map t. This is the part of the definition. Okay. I want to caution you that there are slightly varying definitions you know, weaker or stronger and so on. There are different definitions possible. And then they will make under this condition, this will be equal to that one, that will be equal to this one and so on. We are not going to study all that in this course. Okay. So let us take this definition, namely, there must be a linear map which is bounded, that is continuous linear map from T to V, which satisfies this. Know, this equation limit of f of x naught plus h minus fx minus th whole thing divided by norm h this limit must be zero okay as soon as such a t exists okay it has to be unique you can't have two different linear maps t1 and t2 having satisfying the same property. 
This is an easy consequence of just similar to what we do in a real analysis or any any other different you know uh, multivariate calculus and so on. Okay, uniqueness is not a difficult thing. So that unity is called the derivative of f at the point x naught, and I am using the same notation d f of x naught standard notation. The only thing is. You might not have called the same thing as a Frechet derivative. We are going to call it as Frechet derivative. Okay, this is Frechet who started with Banach space uh, uh, calculus. Okay, Frechet derivative of f at the point x naught. If f is differentiable at each point x inside an open set, then we say f is differentiable on the open set U. Further, if the function which assigns to each point u its derivative. Remember, a derivative is a bounded linear map, right? T is a bounded linear from v to w. So it is taking values inside b, v, w. If this function for each x here inside u, you take dfx, that will be denoted by df. If this itself is continuous, then we say that f is continuously differentiable on u or we can say it's a class c1 okay there are ways of making class c2 definition c3 and so on so we will stop here only class c1 here okay so if you go back the very first thing you do is the so called increment theorem for differentiable functions or a function which has a derivative at a single point. Rewriting this, uh, this equation, you know, as uh, what is that? Clearing the denominator, reinterpret it. That's called increment theorem. Same thing is true here also, namely f of x naught plus h minus f x naught minus t of h naught is equal to this norm h as one on the other side i am writing that as the remainder r of x naught depending upon h it depends upon x naught as well as h okay so you can write it as f of x naught plus h is f x naught plus d f x naught h plus some error term so this is called the increment theorem or the first approximation, linear approximation to f. Okay. If we increase the value of x naught by h, the increment is roughly dfx naught of h. You can ignore this one. You can ignore the last term. That is the whole idea. Why, 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 why should you ignore this one? Or why, what, I mean, what makes you ignore this one? It is not always possible, but because of this definition, what we have is, if you divide this by h, then take the limit, it is 0. The remainder after the first term here has the property, divide by norm h and take the limit, it is 0. So this is called increment theorem, Okay, exactly as in the case of one variable calculus here. Okay, the following statements are all easy to check exactly as in the case of one wave calculus. Okay, every constant function is differentiable everywhere. Everywhere means what? On the whole of V, on the whole, wherever they are different. Okay, and its derivatives are always zero. The derivative at all the points is zero for a constant function. For, for every vector V belonging to V, translation function see on a vector space you have this u going to u plus v where v is fixed it's a translation functor i have written t upper v by u okay maybe i will forget to write this notation every time the translation function is very easy to remember this is differentiable everywhere and its derivative is the identity function Remember, the translation is from V to V. 
so the derivative will be also from v to v it will be linear map it is a continuous linear map in this case is identity of v all that you have to check is you know go back this definition f of x naught plus h minus f x naught will be what now t v of this one will be adding v then again adding v here v v cancels off this is just thing it's just like x naught plus h minus x naught okay so what should i take t take a identity map then this numerator itself will be identically zero there is no need to divide by norm h and so on so it will be always true that's all so the translation maps adding a constant you know this is a rule you can di di differentiate this function you going to use identity right so identity map derivatives identity that v is constant so it goes away so that's another way of looking at it every bounded linear map is also differentiable here one lucky thing is that we don't have to make further assumptions start the linear map you don't know that it is continuous so you have to make the assumption you know you have to put that extra condition continuity once it is continuous it is differentiable and its derivative is again the same function t at all the points x inside this is again standard uh, result inside rn r into rn if you have linear map you know that its derivative it's a linear map itself okay you can directly verify it by taking t itself as uh, in the in the slot in the third slot here so t of x naught plus h minus t of x naught minus t h is zero <laughs> so that will give you that t itself is a derivative of t okay and then this standard uh, uh, addition rule and scalar multiplication rule if f and g are differentiable at x not alpha beta scalars alpha f plus beta g is differentiable at x not okay indeed if alpha beta from u to k are scalar functions which are differentiable at x not then this alpha times f this is not a composition this is this is just multiplication right this scalar multiplication so derivative of alpha f makes sense it will be differentiable similarly beta g makes sense the sum makes sense so this will be also differentiable at x naught okay of course you have to use leibniz rule here okay so if f is differentiable at x naught then it is continuous at x naught same same proof as in the case of one variable this is a one variable calculus after all okay the logic the, the definition the, you can just look at uh, the increment theorem here okay you can show that if f is differentiable this rule is true now you can show that f is continuous also okay so so far except in the definition i have started the continuous linear map this is just like one variable calculus in the in the one variable calculus you are just a real number but if you think carefully if you know that you have you must have done it already a real number uh, is actually a, represents a linear map from r to r Okay, the namely multiplication by that number. So there is so far there is no difference at all. So it may be noted that if f is differentiable to x naught, then all is directional derivative. Sorry, so let me let me call this one. Okay, I'm jumping here. All the directional derivatives are also exist. Will also exist is what I wanted to say. So let us see what is the meaning of directional derivative. Again, this is same thing as in the Uh, multivariate calculus starting with two uh, banach spaces v and w again open subset u of the domain 
x not belonging to you now you take any vector preferably a non zero vector even vector zero is also valid okay take any non zero vector okay let f from u to uh, w be any function then the directional derivative dv dv of f at x not so this is derivative of f in the direction of v at the point x not okay e is defined as follows okay namely it is a vector w inside w such that in this third slot whatever your t of h you are writing instead of this one now t of w multiplication by t here or you know the vector w is just the direction that so f of x not plus t x not plus t times v now we okay, not arbitrary h minus f of x not minus t of w this entire thing is now function of a one variable t real variable so you are dividing it by t itself okay no norm so see f x not is fixed v is fixed w is fixed so it is function of real variable one variable this function must be this limit must be zero in other words if you just look at f of x not plus t times v this function must be differentiable okay as a function of t okay and its derivative is w that's called directional derivative exactly same definition as in the case of usual multivariable calculus okay and you can immediately verify that all the directional derivatives will exist as soon as the derivative at x not exists so often one calls the other derivative which you have defined as total derivative okay, these are direction derivatives are total derivatives you can talk about partial derivatives but then you have to fix up coordinates in banach spaces coordinate fixing is, is something very fishy <laughs> you don't want to do that so let v and w be any two norm linear spaces a continuous linear map t from v to w is said to be an isomorphism if it is invertible as a function and the inverse is also continuous okay so here i have taken this definition for all norm linear spaces also okay the remark here is that the inverse of a linear function is automatically linear this is elementary algebra on any vector space okay if you have a continuous in you know, a bijection which is sorry which you have just a bijection which is linear then the inverse is automatically linear that is not a problem but inverse may not be continuous this is what we have been uh, telling even if it's a if it's a bijection even if it's a bijection it continues the inverse may not be continuous so we have to mention it separately okay in the above situation some authors simply call t an invertible operator this is another name they do not isomorphism inverse is inverse is here continuous etc they will say just a invertible operator so i will also use that term now okay if v and w are banach spaces then for any invertible continuous linear transformation t from v to w automatically t inverse will be continuous okay see remember invertible just for me it does not mean that it is continuous 
So I want to be very careful. Invertible operator, when you say, by convention, uh, inverse is also continuous. A linear map may be invertible. Okay, it has an inverse, but it may not be continuous. That is why I am making this caution. But if V and W are Banach spaces, no problem. Automatically, the inverse will be continuous. Okay, but this one needs a deeper theorem there, namely what is called as open mapping theorem. Okay. We are not going into that deep into function analysis, it's not a course on function analysis. But I am just mentioning this. I will never use this property though. Okay. I will never use it because I, we are not going to prove in you know, I am just mentioning it as a information. That's all. Okay. If T is an isomorphism from definition that we have taken applied to both T and T inverse, we get two constants. This right hand side constant says T is continuous, right? Norm of T is less to lambda x. Similarly, I must have other way around also for T inverse, which will give you a lambda prime on this side. Lambda prime of norm x is less than or equal to norm of Tx, which you can write it as, you know, no, norm of T inverse of of x is less than equal to lambda times lambda prime times norm of uh, x also. You can write similar way. So both sides you get a constant here. Remember, this was the definition of that two functions are similar. Two linear transformations are similar. Okay. So this is what we had. So T itself is a similarity here because it's similar to the identity map. It is not identity map, but it is similar to the identity map. So T from V W is called a similarity of two normal spaces. Such a thing happen. Okay, we have studied similarities in the in the part one. Now here is a theorem that I need to use. So, go through this carefully. Huh? Start with two Banach spaces. Put A equal to A, V, W. A is a short form here when V and W are understood. What is this A, V, W? It is all set of all similarities from T, V to W. Okay. Not all transformation only similarities. Consider the function eta from A to B W V, the other way around from W to V, okay, defined by eta of t equal to t inverse. So each element here is invertible, so I can take the inverse. Again, I am getting inside A V W. So this eta is actually lands you from A to A W V. Okay, doesn't matter. So it is inside B V W B W V, which is a Banach space. Okay, so let A B then sorry then A is an open subset of this B V W, and eta is differentiable on the entire of A. Okay, so I am stating a non-trivial thing here. First of all, I say that this subset is an open subset of BVW. Remember, BVW itself is a Banach space. Okay, and eta is differentiable on A. Further, the derivative d eta, which is a map from A into BWV. Okay, because eta itself is a map into BWD. Its derivative will also taking values there. Okay. For each point A, you have a, a linear map given by D eta of D eta operating at a T will be a linear map operating on S. 
Okay. This is nothing but, you know, pre-composing with T inverse, again, post-composing with T inverse and taking the minus. So, it's a complicated uh, derivative here, okay. For every S belong to B, V, W. Start with for every S. S is not invertible. S is arbitrary element, okay. Arbitrary element of trans linear. Uh, see, A is a subset of this, right? And I'm claiming A is an open subset. On an open subset, you have a function. You can talk about whether it's differentiable. The statement is that that is differentiable and its derivative is this one. Okay, so that is a statement. So let's see, the proof is not all that difficult at all. First of all, what may happen is this A is empty. What is the meaning of that? There may not be any similarities between V and W. Okay. So if you want to say anything, there is no statement about this being an unempty here. But on no empty space, whatever I have made, they are vacuously true. So there is nothing, no logical difficulty here. But you want to prove something, you should assume A is non-empty, that's all. Otherwise, you don't have to prove anything. All right, so assume A is non-empty, then we can follow. What is the meaning of A is non-empty? There is some similarity, which means V and W are similar already. That's a non-trivial assumption. Okay. The above theorem implies in particular that A is continuous. Because we have already remarked that any function which is differentiable at a point is continuous at that point. So we are going to prove that D, this eta is differentiable on the whole of A. Therefore, it is continuous on the whole of A. This is not stated here, but it is an easy consequence of that. So we will use that also. Okay. Okay. Towards the proof of that A is an open subset. In the last lecture, we have already made the preparation for this. So let us see how. Take a point T inside A. What is it? It is a similarity from V to W. Okay. So it has some norm. Okay. I am taking K equal to norm of T inverse. Okay. Then I am claiming that the ball of radius 1 by K around T is contained inside A. T is arbitrary, such a ball is contained inside A, this 1 by K is obviously you know, is non-zero, right? So that will show that A is open. For each point, you have a ball, open ball, contained inside uh, that uh, set A, so A is open. So how to show this? So this is what we want to claim, right? So let S belong into B, V, W, Okay, this ball is taking place where? Inside BVW, right? A is a subset of BVW. Be such that norm of S is less than 1 by K. Then we know that T inverse composite S is less than or equal to norm of T inverse into norm of S is less than 1. Right? That is the whole idea why I took norm of this... Uh, k equal to t inverse, norm of t inverse. Okay, t inverse, norm of t inverse, t inverse will cancel out, so it's less than 1. Therefore, by lemma that we have proved, you know, that we have stated and indicated the proof also, lemma 1.63 follows that identity plus t inverse of s is invertible. There it was identity minus you can take minus s here and you can put, this will become plus. Identity but t inverse of s is invertible. Okay? Because norm of this one is less than 1. But then you can write t 
टी प्लस एस एस टी कंपोजिट आइडेंटिटी दैट इज टी प्लस टी टी कैंसल टी एंड टी नर्स कैंसल अवे एस ओके तो दिस इज टी इज इनवर्टिबल टी इज ए सिमिलैरिटी दिस इज इनवर्टिबल सो द कंपोजिट इज इनवर्टिबल सो टी प्लस एस इज एन एलिमेंट ऑफ ए okay so these are the points inside the inside this box every element here looks like t plus s where norm of s is less than by k that is the ball so the whole ball is contained inside a that's all we have proved that a is open all right now we want to show the derivative okay fixity i want to show that d is that eta is differentiable at t okay the map s going to t inverse composite s composite t inverse again is a bounded linear operator why s is the variable here i am taking the right composition In the left composition by some other bounded linear operator, so exactly t inverse on both sides now. Okay, so we have seen that composing left or right is again a bounded linear transformation. We are doing twice. What are they? They are actually l t inverse and r t inverse. So this map s going to t inverse s t inverse. is nothing but i have a short notation is phi t which is minus of r t inverse plus l t inverse there is it's minus sign coming here you see in the statement is minus sign so i have put take this as put minus phi t phi phi t to minus r t inverse s t inverse this is a linear map from b v w to b w v okay we want to show that This minus v t is the derivative of eta at t. Okay, this is the same thing we are showing that now. Remember what is eta? T plus s inverse. See eta taking the inverse minus t inverse. It is like f of t plus s minus f t, right? It's like that. That f is t plus s inverse minus t inverse plus this map phi t operating upon s, which is t inverse s t inverse. Phi t operating upon this one that one. So there's a minus sign. So here I get a plus sign. Divided by the norm s, s tends to zero, must be equal to zero. This limit must be zero. So this is what we have to show. Okay, then the proof is over, right? So first of all, t plus s can be written as identity plus s t inverse t. The t if you push it inside, see here now I have stopped writing composition. S t directly I am writing. Okay. so this is just for convenience everywhere composite composite i have already stopped writing composite in cr here i wrote here when i am doing computation i am now no no longer it's just like multiplication now okay you must understand that these are compositions that's all so identity composite t plus s t inverse t inverse is s so that is t plus s okay so since we can choose norm s to be less than 1 by k okay so that norm of s t inverse is less than 1 then we have this identity plus s t inverse can be inverted identity plus s t inverse inverse will be nothing but 0 to infinity minus minus 1 raised to n because there is minus sign okay If it's plus sign, everything will be plus here. If it's minus sign here, then everything will be plus here. This plus is alternative to minus one minus one raised to n. 
S T inverse raised to n. This is geometric series, zero to infinity. Therefore, T plus S inverse minus T inverse plus T inverse S T inverse. I am computing this one. Okay. So T plus S inverse can be written as now. The T plus S was this one. Its inverse will be T inverse into identity plus S T inverse. Identity plus T inverse is this summation. So I am writing that T inverse into that summation minus T inverse plus T inverse S T inverse as it is. They are terms. Okay. So from here to here, what I have come? I have just used this T plus S inverse is this way. I have written inverse of that will be first T inverse. It is an inverse of this. But this is like this. This is a geometric series. So I have substituted here. Now look at the first term here. N equal to zero. So it's just T inverse. That can cancels with this one. What is the first term here? N equal to one. What is this? S T inverse into T inverse on the left. So that is this term. So that also cancels out. That's a minus sign here with the first term. For zero term, this is plus sign, this is minus sign here. So those to cancel out, what you are left out is this summation from n equal to two onwards. Okay, so S T inverse raised to two comes out. So T inverse into S T inverse raised to two, then zero to infinity S T inverse. S T inverse powers, S T inverse raised to n. So up till here we have computed. Now what we have to do? We have to divide it by norm s, and then take the limit. When you take the norm of this part, the norm s comes here with a power is twice, right? So one power cancels out when you divide by norm s. Other power norm s remains. The rest of the terms are any in a bounded function. They are, they are just some, some bounded functions. When you take the norm of the whole thing, right? Therefore, as norm s tends to zero, this will be zero. Okay, the claim follows. Only one norm s come in, in the square term. Cancels out, the other one remains. The rest of them is bounded. Less tends to zero, norm s tends to zero. So this is okay. So we have shown that eta is differentiable. From an earlier remark, it is continuous. I have already told you, I am repeating it. Okay. Eta is continuous. How to show that d eta is continuous? Now we have formula for d eta. Look at the formula. Formula says d eta is caught by t inverse phi t inverse. Sorry, minus t inverse on the left, t inverse on the right. Okay, so there is a minus sign doesn't matter. So is this continuous? Well, that is phi t for us, right? T going to t inverse is continuous. Multiplication is can be some continuous, light and side is continuous, and so on. This is what we are saying. Therefore, continuity of eta d eta also follows. Okay. Continuity of d eta follows because of first of all, eta is continuous and phi is continuous. Okay. The phi is what? Taking left multiplication and right multiplication, maybe taking minus sign also, whatever. So all that I am heavily using 1.53 here, right? This part I am using that L and R are continuous. L corresponds to left multiplication, R corresponds to right multiplication. Before that, you have to take inverse. T going to T inverse is continuous, also you have here. That is that is the eta itself. Combining this, what we get is 
the derivative d eta is continuous at all the points and the whole of a so here is a, an exercise i am not going to use it in the in the course but this is something which is very very useful for people who do lie the lie groups and so on so that is precisely what it is take any banach space let b will denote the space of all bounded linear operators from t to e okay then this becomes a group of it or not obviously right you can compose you can take the inverse and this is a group what is more important is that this is a differentiable group or what we call as topological group is more than a topological group namely the multiplication mu from bv cross bv to bv the mu of st put st this itself is done differentiable taking inverse is differentiable we have seen so that makes it to a, what is called as a differentiable group or what is called as lie group except that the word lie group is used only for manifolds this is what is called as a banach manifold okay modeled on a banach space so if you want to study banach lie groups this is the starting point so i am giving you this an exercise show that mu is differentiable and compute its derivative let glv denote the open subspace bv consisting of all isomorphisms they form a group not this bv okay along with our theorem about exercise implies that glv is a lie group modeled on banach space so that is just an exercise the only thing is uh, you will see how to differentiate this one where is the derivative and where the derivative taking values if you figure it out then you will know what is the derivative okay so thank you very much that is all for today